Hi, and welcome to Trunco Live, where we're socially distant, but technically connected. I am Marcy Tyler, the Director of Building Science for Trunco, and I'm one of your hosts. And I'm Paul Hugenbaum. I'm the President of Trunco Construction Products Group, Marcy, a fine collection of brands, companies, product lines, systems, all over the world, and most importantly, our people. Our people. Um, I know you ha attended a meeting this week with RPM, and I saw the um, intro video that was done yep. showing all of our people around the world. So it'd be great to share that at some point. Yeah, we're actually planning on doing that group wide. I, I, it's the dates in my, yeah. my calendar somewhere, but that'll be the first time, Marcy, that we're sharing that globally all at one time. That means yeah. some people are up early, some people are, yeah. are up late uh, all at once. Yep. And I also noticed that we have a featured new video on YouTube that'll, that is being launched, I think, at 5 o'clock today. So if you follow us on our Tremco Sealants YouTube channel, we have a new video coming out with new content. So uh -huh. that's exciting. Have I seen that yet? I don't know. Okay. I, I, I was going to, I meant to ask Elise beforehand what that video was, but it's pretty, pretty exciting. We've got a lot of different things that we uh, are doing, you know, in this virtual space, trying to make sure that we are able to connect with each and every one of you. So whether you're joining us live each week or if you're checking us out on YouTube um, we really do appreciate your engagement and we look forward to hosting you uh, back once again when we're able to here at it feels the facility. Like that's becoming sooner. <laughs> I know it feels that way right? <laughs> Every time that at least the state of Ohio I think they're they're vaccinating 50 and over and of course President Biden just said all adults by May 1st. I know so, right like how exciting is yeah, all that? So, by the end of summer we, we might be able to start, you know, engaging with people regularly. So that could be pretty exciting. It would be very exciting. So uh, if you guys can see here, we got a sunny day in Cleveland. So everyone's have in, in good spirits. And Paul and I talked about doing one of the Tremco Lives on bikes one day. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine us riding down the street talking about testing and technologies. And yeah. maybe one of you guys will join us in that ride. Yeah, we could have a possum. Yes. Exactly. And I think you talked about rugby teams stopping at bars. <laughs> so let's make sure to invite a rugby team. I did, I did, yeah. Yep. Makes makes the ride a little a little less uh yeah. you know, painful maybe. I don't know. Or or more painful depending on how you look at it. So but yeah, so it's just exciting. I think um, so many different things going on that we really do appreciate your time and attention each week. If you caught us last Friday, um, we were talking about versus. So we really want to be able to compare technologies in the month of March. And we, we talked all about that lion and that lamb. Um, I think it's also interesting to think about, you know, other cities that just have great weather all the time. When we have a nice day, it's just the spirits of everyone all over today you know grocery store post office i'm sure everyone's got a smile on their face today yeah, yeah i don't i wonder what it would be like to live in I, such a city i, I can't imagine i what can't imagine to, to email some of our friends in san diego exactly we, we should definitely do that so um i'm going to challenge all of you today um i did post on linkedin that our topic today is secure x 430. um secure x 430 near and dear to me um, was a part of that launch team. And I really want you guys to utilize this time to type in your questions or your challenges that you have related to that system. So definitely use that question bar as you can can every week. I know we're, we're always kind of rushed for time. You know, we'd like keeping it 30 minutes, but keep those questions coming in. Um, we definitely want to be able to address them live with you all. Um, I did some training this week on this topic, which I thought was great to be able to have it for you all live today. I feel like there's not an objection I haven't heard. So it's another challenge for you. Like, let, let me hear what your what your issues might be or what your questions might be about the system. So we can we can talk about them today or obviously in the future as well. So, as always, we've got some content to share with um, everybody. We'll open that up. Um, we wanted to be able to uh, talk through th this, this comparative system today with all of you. Um, so, as we showed last week, we want to be able to compare these technologies or these installations, and so today it's air barriers. Um, and, and it's going to play a big part, as we mentioned last week, is connectivity and transitions will always play a part and perhaps we'll have to do maybe even a whole month on that again on transitions and connectivity. I don't know that a month would be enough time. It probably wouldn't be. You know, I was talking to Lizzie Bailey. So if you're watching right now, Lizzie, she agrees with us, Paul. There's an endless amount of topics that we can continue to share each and every week. Yeah, if you just 
do the math, right? I don't know my math again, but you know, when you say there's so many choices you can make for each component, which gives you gazillions and gazillions of possible assemblies, oh, yeah. all with unique, unique, unique combination of interfaces. Exactly. Always lots of different interfaces, lots of different challenges, lots of different ways that we can talk through these things. And um, I did speak with another uh, a consultant friend of mine in the industry, um, uh, Niall, and he's going to come on and he's going to talk about compatibility with us. So he's doing a presentation in the industry um, talking about uh, like marriage. Are we compatible? And it's his, you know, his spoof on, on the whole idea of compatibility. So I'm excited to bring him on live with us. Yeah, compatibility so. is always, it's always interesting because you have initial compatibility and then, uh, I don't know if the right description is long-term compatibility. Mm -hmm. and, and then how do you get through that accelerated uh, aging test that, tell, that takes you five, 10, 15 or even 20, 30 years down the road. Absolutely. I, there's different different stages. There's different ways to look at these things. And we definitely want to make sure that we can look at them, address them, and make sure we understand if there is points of concern on those, yeah. on those interfaces. Um, this week, um, our March educational series is in full swing. If you've missed that, you want to join us, um, please uh, uh, just reach out to me or look on my LinkedIn so we can get you registered for that educational series. One of our speakers talked all about focusing on the 1% of that structure, and that 1% of your structure is the connections. So that's yeah. what we got to look at. We got to look at those connections and make sure we're doing them right. So speaking of um, industry uh, dialogue, industry representatives out there having different types of, uh, doing different research and having different types of conversation, one of them is Stephen Doggett. Um, I'm not sure if those of you that are watching today um, know who that is or follow him on LinkedIn, but he does a lot of testing with different systems. Yeah, I, I follow him and uh, always uh, a lot of very thoughtful uh, information and yeah. testing. Yeah. So I had asked him to be on today's broadcast, but he is um, having the afternoon, spending the afternoon with his son. But he did say that any customer that we have that would like to sit down and talk to him about his testing, he's willing to set that up. So at the end of today's broadcast, that's going to be my polling question I put up there, is if you're interested in having some one-on-one -on -one time with Stephen Doggett, we can talk through his testing. That is something that he offered up and would be willing to do. And he also looks forward to coming back and visiting with us again because he did come through our facility a couple years ago. Yeah. Um, so we're looking forward to that. But he just uh, did some testing. I don't know if you've seen it. It was about two months ago, comparing different types of technologies. And he focused on Securic XOR 430. And he did this test here that's I made it bigger. 8,760 hours was what he tested, where normally it's done for five hours. So he did, what was that, seven, 1,700 times longer than that five-hour test. Yeah, we talk a lot, Marcy, about test to failure, and mm -hmm. I think uh, Stephen's a kindred spirit yeah. in doing that. And the reason I think we try to emphasize that is you really want to know what is the failure mode. Absolutely. And I always call it you want an elegant failure mode as, as opposed to catastrophic. Yeah. Exactly. So lots of great uh, information there. So more to come on, on that. We'll definitely, if you're interested in having those conversations, please let me know so we can do that. But um, really did enjoy reading uh, the stuff that he worked on today. So Secure XR 430 is that system we're talking about today as we look at comparing different types of technologies. Um, Paul, uh, this case study here, Kettering Health, this is a great one, not too far from where we're sitting today in Dayton, Ohio. Um, and let's uh, go ahead and play this quick video all about this project. And I forgot, Elise told me I need to do it myself. <laughs> so we'll get you that in here in a second. What we're building now is a Kettering Health Network PICWA Emergency Department and MOB. The SC430 was selected because Kettering has a very high expectation for quality and they know that with that product they're going to get a quality installation. Securoc XOR 430 is essentially our exterior glass mat base panel and then we factory apply uh, Tremco air barrier material to the outer face of that panel. So what it gives you is every 4 by 8 sheet you're not just hanging an exterior glass mat, you're hanging your exterior glass mat and your air barrier as well. It gives you flexibility in your schedule, being able to shrink your schedule, take on weather delays, you know, it gives you a little bit of float. 
once you slow down that initial sheeting of a building, it slows every trade behind it down. With the 430 system, we can get a building dried in twice as fast as using um, you know, a regular commercial wrap or a fluid applied product. One of the things I love about it is that once you've hung the board, which is all uniform, you can visually see, thanks to the caulking being different colors between the spec one and the diamonic, you can tell what's been done and where they use what product and if it's done right. You know, high winds can shut us down. Uh, obviously, a lot of rain will shut us down. We get off and on snow flurries all through the Miami Valley, so that almost always cuts out any fluid applied weather barriers. With the 430 board, everything's pre-applied. We know we can put it on in cold temps. We can also put it on if we've got kind of a drizzle and rain going on. And on top of the labor savings, you also save on equipment as well. So the, the all-in-one system is what makes this, this product stand out from the rest. So pretty interesting. I love that video, short and sweet to the point. Um, thanks to for to Dennis for giving us those testimonials um, on that video. Yeah, you talk, you just talked about compatibility. So of course, every component of this system is highly compatible and highly tested, so that there's no there's no concerns. Um, interesting you bring that up. Um, we've got our first question that came in from our audience just now, all about that accessory. So. Um, just to kind of touch on that, the question is, do we do they have to use our accessories? Um, well, that's a great question, Marcy. Right. What's the answer? Well, it's, it's interesting. <laughs> um, I think I, I teased one of one of the one of our customers, and I was like, well, no, you don't have to, but then you don't have your warranty that comes with it. So that could probably not that could probably not be right. But in all you know, all kidding aside, obviously we we've just as you mentioned, we tested all these accessories very for very long very long periods of time in terms of exposure of the board exposure of the accessories how well do they adhere over time right if you put that panel up today and you don't have to adhere for it maybe a couple of weeks with your accessories we did all that testing ahead of time and, and that warranty is what's going to get you that whole system so we definitely want you to use our accessories it's just a huge part of the value proposition yeah. and i think as a, a number of the people in the video mentioned the ability to work through uh, all that inclement yes. weather and that's also part of the components of the system are they all support the ability this is one of our great we call cold weather and climate weather systems yeah. all the components are completely compatible with those we'll call it adverse environments exactly yeah so and you can see in here they use purple so they used some silicones here so a lot of times what our, our customers like to do is they may want to use a silicone sealant if it's getting colder out it's a little more user friendly other people want to stay with that Diamonic 100 and continue to use that. So we, we do have those specific colors. Now we didn't in the beginning, but we listened to those early installers and said, you know, it'd be great to have different colors. So, and you know, I remember being in the meeting when we chose purple and I like that color. Is that the color? That is the color. How was that selected? Well, you know, you look around and you try to decide what, what could stand out, right? Mm -hmm. and, and I think that was, that was one of those features, right? It was standing out. Cause I think we started with everything was orange. And then we started out with our sealants being green, and then you wanted to be able to differentiate between the silicone and the urethane. So and that's what we landed on purple. Um, Kurt Peterson, I'm sure you're not watching. He's one of the USG guys that worked really hard in the beginning with us on this launch. And I was coming up with a bunch of different names and he likes his pack of eight crayons. He didn't want to go beyond the eight. So if we said like persimony or, <laughs> you know, magnolia or, you know, just teal even, he was like, nope. I got my simple box of crayons, so there you yeah. go. But really does obviously really help from a quality control perspective as well. As they mentioned, you know, being able to see that those board joints and those fasteners heads are done. And I see we have another question coming in right now. Um, one of the objections that people have had is that they're worried about the fact that the detailing is done after the membrane, right? If you think about a traditional install, you got your sheathing board, you're doing all your detailing, and then you're coating over it with the membrane, right? So. I, I say, yeah, that, you know, that's definitely how the traditional install is done. In this case, now you can see that the detailing was done and most likely it's gonna have even more detailing than what you would have saw in a traditional one because that sealant is much thicker in this application versus if you were doing it underneath your membrane. Yeah, and I think the, uh, I remember this from a, a previous interview, it's the fact that you see in the bottom left picture they're observing from the ground. So <laughs> your, your ability to QC it from a distance rather than have to 
put your nose on it with a lift or a swing stage is uh, is really good. Exactly. So so definitely, I'm, I'm loving I'm loving the interaction today. Maybe we'll we'll have this type of questions and this type of interaction um, for future ones because we we like being questioned. And we like those those challenges. So another thing we always like to look at is is when you compare technologies, how do they kind of line up? Um, according to those requirements that we see of that air barrier. So we're going to talk a little bit about that in these next couple of slides, and this might bring up even some more questions that you might have um, as it relates to this product and the system. So um, right here, just looking at that comparing technologies, we've got fluid applied, we have self-adhered, and then we have factory applied. Now, I do a much longer presentation that goes into a lot of different technologies, and we'll ask you at the end if that's something you'd like to hear or see. I can most definitely do that, but you can see here, Paul, factory applied is eliminating a lot of those other those other things right yeah so I, I was a little surprised that it's uh, it just combines yeah. so many things into one one easy step and uh, I think the other thing that you learn pretty quick is we know the mill thickness is just a, a hundred percent spot on because it's yep. checked continuously at the exactly plant. yep Exactly. So I think those are some of those things that we really wanted to focus on was eliminating some of those things you can't control um, and taking the best of both, right? So the best that's in a fluid applied, really good adhesion, you know, making sure that you have uh, something that is, you know, weather resistant in terms of UV exposure, taking the best of self-adhered because people love that, that, that known thickness, right? That factory applied thickness that you're going to get from a self-adhered membrane. And then eliminating a lot of that job site waste. Um, I always tease people. I used to do the, the hands-on training for our fluids and, you know, messy, sticky, solvents, all that kind of stuff. Um, completely different when you start to look at factory applied. Now, what's great is we have innovative products for all of these areas. So um, it's, it goes back to your preference, but we're, you know, really excited about how we can save a lot of time with that factory applied. Yeah, and uh, real shout out to USG for this. Uh, I remember getting a chance to go see their, their plant and their operations. What an enormous commitment oh, yeah. from them to uh, figure this out. If you've ever been in an exterior jet plant, a lot of, a lot of boards moving real fast. <laughs> really fast. It's amazing how quickly. Yeah, and the fact that uh, they really persisted in, in uh, figuring that out, uh, real, real debt of gratitude to USG. We'll, we'll talk a little bit about that in, in some of these uh, subsequent slides, and we'll talk even more about time, time savings probably in a future broadcast, but I just wanted to put that out there as we're talking about comparing technologies. We did do time studies comparing this system with the fluid and comparing it with the peel and stick, and that general rule of savings is what we see is that you can save about one hour for every 100 square feet. Yeah, and I think the thing that's sort of missing from this is the inclement weather piece. So this is... You noticed that, didn't you? Yeah, these are pretty days, huh? This is, this sunny is assuming days. sunny to sunny, and that's a tough assumption. And, uh, you know, the rule of thumb that we like to use a lot is that people want generally three to five days of good weather to put a crew on, and that really, that, that limitation goes away. We've got tremendous feedback and case studies of how much the... Either construction time has been shortened yeah. or people switched out to this because they got behind schedule exactly. and they were going to hit winter and this help really and save, saved the day. Help and save the day for sure. Yeah. So once again, I'm, we're getting a lot of questions and just about that. How do we compare these technologies? How do you go about bidding something like this? That's where our great feed on the street can really help you out. Um, but we do have information like value calculators. We do have this time study information that we can walk you through that. So once again, at the end of today's program, there's going to be options where you can choose what type of follow-up you'd want. If you're watching this on YouTube, at the end of the presentation, you're going to see my email that you can send out as well. And whoever is watching who just sent a message to Kurt Peterson, thank you so much for sending that because Kurt just texted me and said he got a shout out. So he's since retired. Okay. So the, the we had we spent a lot of time together with USG in the development of this system, and um, we're really happy that he heard that we mentioned him. So Yeah, I think the other key thing to mention is we always talk about our people. So it's about our field support. Mm -hmm. So anybody that wants to make sure we're there a job startup, one, to make sure it's being done right, and two, whatever production rate the contractor bid, how do we make sure that you get that production rate or better right. and, and help you do that right at startup? Exactly, yep. That, that's where we really want to be a part of that and really help you be successful. I know we've got a couple more questions coming in, um, so we'll handle them, I promise you, as we get to some of these slides. 
Um, but to find the weather, right? This this is a, that huge advantage that you mentioned, Paul, and it was mentioned in that video with Dennis. You know how they saved saved so much time because they were able to continue to work in this inclement weather. Um, I know we also featured a local project here in Cleveland um, with Cleet Miller, who he was on a video as well, and talking all about that and how how that was a super time savings for them. And it's not just snow, right? We've had You're right. It's not just snow. We've had some uh, epic springs. We know because it impacts construction. Yeah. where it could rain, I don't know, 25 out of 30 days in, oh, I don't know, the month of June. So it's a, it's also in places that get, get a lot of rain. Yeah, and, and I think one of our earliest projects was out in uh, either Seattle or Portland. So absolutely handling that Pacific Northwest weather, right? Yeah, if you have a system out there, the yeah, if you have a system out there that's rain tolerant, then you're, you're in a pretty good position. Love these pictures, and I always tell people that live in sunny places like San Diego or Florida that that is not sand, that is snow. So <laughs> just another great case study of pictures. Thank you, Steve Silva, for um, sending me these years ago of uh, this successful project that was being done, even with snow falling or anticipated snow coming, right? You're able to start to really get that buttoned up and get that going. So. Once again, testing is so huge for this type of system, and we love to be able to provide all this past testing that we have done and any future testing that you may require. Um, love the photos that are featured here. The two bottom ones um, are testing that we did with a specific consultant in Philadelphia. So David Schoenhardt, if you're watching, I know those are some of your assemblies that you're gonna feature in an IIBEC presentation coming up soon. I think it's in September. The middle one is a project we did with the uh, Smith Group where they wanted us to test for that you saw that video many times, Paul, testing that Simple Seal product with a seismic drift joint that was supposed to be an inch and a half, but when the bracket broke, it ended up being three inches. So successfully. And then the last one there was bringing that whole project team in for a project in Baltimore. So utilizing that test facility to really take away those pain points or those challenges and have that whole design team be a part of those learnings is so amazing. Yeah, the picture on the right, Marcy, that's one of my one of my favorite bucks or test walls out there just because it's there's so many ways to attach panel systems. Yeah. And, and, and if I recall, that one is, I don't know, you feature like 10 different ones and you quiz people about which ones. Yes, I always, I, I think we've done it on a past uh, broadcast was just that, right? Asking people what was the right fastener. So we did get, speaking of fasteners, we did get a couple questions then about fasteners. Um, so if you have a stucco wall um, and you are looking at applying that metal lath, so you're uh, mechanically attaching metal lath through this system, we have tested for that. Um, what's great is that robust membrane does self-seal and self-gasket around a variety of different types of threaded fasteners. Mo, if you're watching, I know you are. I said it right. I said threaded thrashners. <laughs> So, um, but we've got a lot of that testing. So when you're looking at stucco, we would like to be able to have that conversation with you, um, understand what the use of your project is, let you know what kind of testing we did do. Um, and, and so though that person who asked that question will definitely reach out to you because we really like to have more of a, a, a conversation with you versus just saying, yes, you don't need to do any extra detailing. But what we have found is you really don't end up having to do extra detailing. But what we've seen is a lot of project teams want to do some little extra detailing here just as a belt and suspenders, depending on the use of the project, the how high up we're going from a wind loading perspective, use of building, all of that. And if we haven't tested it already, it's easy enough for you to get it tested for. You're right. That was another question that just came in. You know, if you have a system and you need to test it, my email is going to be at the end and you can reach out to me. Um, we do that on a regular basis so we can provide that specialized testing for your fasteners that are on your project. Um, I want to highlight that middle one there, I guess. Uh, factory applied, when we look at the requirements of air barrier, continuity is a huge part of it, right? So that first slide was all about air and permeability. We want to make sure that no matter what, that whole membrane is going to be able to protect, provide you that air barrier and that weather resist a barrier. And we take it one step further and we want to make sure it's your water barrier too. So we do a lot of that water resistance testing too. Um, on this slide here, we've got a variety of different pictures again and some great resources. I looked online, Paul, I think there's 18 different videos about Secure Export 430 on our YouTube channel that you can check out. The bottom one there was when we had Matt Rising or do one from the Build Show. So you can check that out and you can see right there at the bottom, um, if you just Google Secure Rock Export 430, test it above and beyond, and you can check out that video that Matt Reisinger did. We've got some of those fastener pictures in the middle there that you mentioned, and then a mock-up and a couple other buildings. So continuity is definitely that place where we have issues. 
we want to make sure we address them and have that approved accessories to really help you have a successful project. And that structural integrity is another one, another link there to a video, Paul, of the USG plan. Matt Risinger did another video with us. And it's a, if you Google, if you design or build commercial buildings, watch this. Um, that is the Matt Risinger video where he takes you right into that plan um, at USG and you can watch how this is made if you enjoy that kind of thing. It's pretty exciting to see that. Yeah, and again, I know I, I gave him a shout out, but it's worth two shout outs. What a, <laughs> what a great partnership with USG. Exactly. So you can see us roll coding there in the center. And what's interesting here is um, we get a lot of questions about, you know, how, how do you know that you're getting good coverage. Well, in the variety of passes that we make it go through, we know we're going to get that appropriate coverage. I love that microscopic image of us showing that 20 mils of membrane. And that's another thing to really consider. If you're comparing us to other technologies that are out there, that's where we want to be able to have that conversation with you. Find out if that membrane that you're, or the other material you're comparing it to, like what kind of mill thickness does it have? We've got 20 mils of manufactured thickness there. And then the green in that microscopic image is the Diamonic 100 that is now making all your connections from a connectivity perspective. So I love showing that microscopic image because it really does show we are giving you a nice, solid, robust system. Uh, next uh, picture here, we've got durability. Love having different types of tests from a durability perspective. I have a couple videos where I, I kind of tease everybody. I have three different boards of Secure XR 430, and I say, can you tell if one of these are compromised? Um, and you know, it's kind of a, a question to see like, oh no, you know, do I have my continuity? Well, you have such a robust product with great tensile strength, great elongation, that we've done testing, Paul, to a pressure differential where the board broke at an edge area, but the membrane stayed intact and never leaked. Yeah, that gets back to failure mode, right? That says that's exactly the way you want to see a system yeah, fail. Exactly. Not that you want it to fail that right. way. But, well, but we like to see what could happen, right? Yeah. And in the way it had to do more with how we constructed that assembly than anything else, but the learning we got from it was how amazing that membrane's ability to bond to that board. Yeah. And that, that way you know you're gonna have a nice robust system. And then we've done a couple different things in terms of expansion joints, testing with um, our ProGlaze ETA. So lots of information that we have there to be able to share with you guys if you are interested. And of course, um, being able to have that full system now, um, including that drive it out solution is really amazing for us to be able to participate in so many different parts of that project. Yeah, it just takes that whole concept of compatibility through the whole rest of the system. And then of course, there sits that whole building warranty and. What a, what, a, what a great package to give to the owner. Exactly, that whole power of one just reconfirmed right there in front of us. Um, and we love getting that project team involved. So here's just some more of that, that project team that we had. Now, I know in this COVID world, you may be wondering, you know, what, what can we do um, from a project involvement? We have had customers in. Um, Mo, I know you did. You had a couple of customers in a few weeks ago, and I know Dante's bringing some in next week. If it's project specific, we're going to be real careful, of course, social distance, make sure we do all our COVID protocol, make sure we limit the amount of people that are in that space. We want to be able to bring you in and have you be able to do that testing. If you can't come in we have the ability obviously with cameras video that we can share as much as you need that you for that for that project that smith group project we did they didn't actually come here we sent videos to them for of everything because they weren't able to come here so and that was years ago yeah. so we can we can handle it however you want the most important takeaway there is let us know what it is that you need help with so that we can solve it. Um, I love this slide here because it's all about the advantages of something like this. And I think Paula, you and I've talked about this is, you know, we've, we've got a product that is high performance and, and the high performance you think comes with a big price tag, right? And that's what we want that ability to sit down and talk to you about that. It, 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 I know I have questions about it. The sticker shock is something that deters people, but they have to look at it from a holistic approach, right? You're not comparing just a board with this system. You're, you gotta look at that whole holistic approach and it's not complicated, it's comprehensive. Yeah, and it's common and in, 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 certainly in any commercial installation, each day has a value to the owner and uh, the ability to save so many days and then initiate occupancy yeah. a lot faster. Uh, like one of the things that just because you weather you weather it in a lot faster, all your other trades come in right away. They come in on the clock, yeah. uh, so you don't you know you're not building in uh, what do you call it uh, 
lost hours with trying to sequence all the other trades. It becomes very fast and very predictable. And a lot of a lot of money or sometimes slack built into budgets for right. those reasons. Yeah. Yeah, and I, you know what? And I, 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 I'm so excited about all of these different ways that we've really continued to help allow the system to excel. And I just got a question, and I'm glad I got it because I forgot to mention it, Paul. Um, they, they said, is this system permeable? And it is. It's a permeable vapor barrier system. And they asked about our impermeable system. It is getting very close to being launched. So check back in with us on that because it is on its way. So uh, definitely something that we, we heard you. We know you wanted to have an impermeable system and we do. I know we've got a couple other questions coming in as well about lead times and things like that. So I will definitely get back to those individual people with that information and make sure that you're connected with your sales reps so that you can have those conversations. Um, but I did want to get to our polling question today. So are you ready to engage Engage is our polling question today. And I love that picture of Dante and I getting ready to arm wrestle there. Um, so are you ready to engage with us? We want to hear your difficult questions. We want to hear what your objections might be to the system. We want to be able to share testing data with you as well. Um, that picture at the bottom might entice you. We've done a lot of different technology comparisons that we'd love to be able to share in a one-on-one -on -one fashion. So if you would go ahead and answer that polling question today. So whether you're our customer or you're an internal, one of our internal reps, um, answer if you would like you know, me to engage or us to engage about continuing education. I've got so many presentations comparing these technologies that I would love to be able to do that. The next one is, would you like a meeting with some subject matter experts where we can talk about a current project that you have? Uh, the next one is meeting with subject matter experts to debate technologies. That's where I'd love you know, to be able to have that uh, that verbal hand, you know, uh, obviously that was before COVID because we're pretty close and, you know, we're pretty engaged there, Dante and I, but to be able to have that debate. I love that type of debate where we can really talk about your experience and then look at how if we tested it or if we can do something together to test and really handle what those concerns are of yours. And then of course the last one there, um, if you need some product specific training, you know, um, we're here to engage with you as well. So I think, at this point, we'll close the polling if uh, if we're at a good stage to do that and uh, bring us back here to our last slide where it is just my contact information. So making sure that you guys have that contact information, mtyler at trunkoinc.com. If you want to join in the conversation, be on a broadcast or have a challenge that you want to be able to um, you know talk to us about, that's what we really love that opportunity. And as always, we love our uh, winding down with you on Fridays. It's super sunny here. So I think this is probably a good time for us to call Tremco Live second week of Versus complete. What do you think? Can you tell us what's next week or is it a secret? Well, it's not a secret. I think it's actually, I think something you're definitely gonna all wanna check in on. Um, I'm gonna be working with Eric Miller um, from the West Coast. He's our Nadora rep. Uh, he loves talking about energy efficiency that you can gain from the thermal mass of insulated concrete forms. And he is going to come on next week with some of his friends. So bring your questions about insulated concrete forms, bring your uh, challenges, and uh, let's talk energy conservation and thermal mass. Yeah, I, I think thermal mass is one of the unsung, uh, un, what do you call it, benefits, understandings, and under it's underappreciated. Yes. So maybe we'll, we'll get thermal mass of love next week. Exactly. That's what we'll do for sure. So thank you, everybody, as always, for your time and attention. And we really look forward to engaging with all of you soon. See you next week. Be safe.